Hello? Hello? Is this thing on? Hello. Whoops. Okay. I think this is on. It has a green light, but it had a green light on before as well. Can you guys hear me? Hello, Hannah. Thanks for moderating. And hello, Christy and Eric. Eric, did you order something from me? Because I just packed it. Um, hello. Can you guys hear me with this? The sales process can be a long and windy journey. Ads. Scared the crap out of me. Okay. Look at this. Like so. All right. Okay, and I'm going to... Oh, there we go. Okay, there we go. Okay. I'll put this here. I look like I'm on the news. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hello. Hello. I hope you guys are doing good, wherever you are. Uh, thought I would do an update, because today is the best day that I've felt since the incident if we want to call it that. So for those of you who don't know, on May, is it May or is it March? March, April, May. It's May. On May 1st, I had a weird neurological anomaly happen in my head where uh, I had these excruciating pains throughout my whole like head and like, just my whole head and in my mouth and stuff. Although I think in my mouth was probably, uh, I don't know, in my head. <laughs> um, I don't know. My whole head hurt. Anyway, uh, from there, we went to the hospital to figure it out. Number one concern was a stroke from Ashley, who is my wife, and she's a nurse. For those of you who don't know, I noticed that we have a bunch of new people here. So thank you, welcome. I'm gonna put this back on. There, that looks better. Um, so my wife, she's a nurse. Sorry about this squeaky chair, by the way. Uh, <laughs> um, so she's a nurse. She did her, whatever you would call it, assessment of me. We decided to go to the hospital. Um, now, if you guys remember, when I got stung in the face by a wasp, to become uh, uh, Gene, the used car salesman. That's an inside joke. You'll have to go back and watch that video if you don't know what I'm talking about. But um, anyway, that's the last time I went to the hospital, I think. Yeah, pretty sure. And I was content with not going because I felt fine. I could breathe fine. And everything was good. This time, I had no problem at all going to the hospital. I saw a lot of comments saying... I'm glad that you listened to Ashley because this could have been, you know, game over sort of thing. Uh, yeah, dude, there was no, there was no way I wasn't going to go to the hospital. This is the absolute worst pain I have ever felt in my entire life. And granted, I probably haven't felt a whole lot of pain per se, but just for some example, so you guys can kind of understand, um, I think I have a pretty big pain tolerance, um, but of course, most men will say that, I, I think. Uh, but, like, I'm being serious. Right, I'm not a pansy, for the most part. I'm pretty, I'm pretty uh, resilient, and I'm pretty strong. But uh, uh, I have one time I broke my scapula, which is your, this bone right here, like that looks like a, like a steak, but it's a bone, <laughs> like your shoulder blade. I broke that one time, plowing into a tree on my bicycle. I went off this embarrassingly small jump, probably about this high of a jump, 
but I was ripping down this hill, just mad fast, hit this jump, and I, uh, the after the jump, about, I don't know, 30 feet, maybe less, there was a banked turn, okay? And a banked turn basically means it's like you go kind of sideways, if you will, right? Um, anyways, when I went off the jump, I misjudged my landing and I did an endo and I uh, like flipped over my handlebars, kind of. That's the easiest way to describe it. I flipped over my handlebars and my shoulder met a tree <laughs> as I was somersaulting and my this part was like way over here. <laughs> Anyways, that was very pain painful. Well, there's no sound. Dubliner. Um, oh, there is sound. Okay. Um, that was painful. What happened in my head on May 1st, March, April, May? Yeah, May 1st, that was considerably worse. Uh, another time while I was framing a house back when I used to frame houses, um, I accidentally shot a nail through my thumb, like right through, right through this knuckle. And it went, uh, it didn't actually stick out of the skin, but it, I could feel it right here. That was pretty painful. That was less painful than the shoulder, but I'm just trying to get you guys to gauge these different things. Uh, Third-degree burns. I haven't been severely third-degree burned, but that's not as painful, at least what I've experienced. Of course, I haven't had very many. I have, I have some lasting scars. Like, here's one. Uh, where are they? Most of my burns are, like, second-degree burns from welding and stuff, but uh, I have had a few third-degree burns. Uh, once We used to make jackass videos, and... One time I, we set me on fire. Uh, I didn't get burns from that because I was on the other side, but this was more painful for, than that. We've gotten into some bad accidents with fire, which uh, if you guys know Dalton from my channel, Dilly Dilly Dalton, he's had the worst of it. My fault. Feel really bad for that. Can't speak to, to his experience versus my head experience. But anyway, point is, this is some bad pain. Right. And I saw someone said, I bet Dakota has something for your pain. Uh, that's funny. So my brother, Dakota, uh, if you guys follow him, you know that he uh, smokes weed. A lot of people uh, smoke weed or take some sort of cannabis product for pain. Um, I had, didn't even think about that, but I would have tried it. I don't smoke anything. I don't do any drugs. I don't really classify weed as a drug, really. Um, I can understand why you would, but. 100% if I would have thought of that I would have I would have tried it because I didn't know what to do. So basically I tried to explain this in the vlog but I wasn't very good at articulating everything and I don't really know like the the medical language so much as you could see I was asking Ashley a lot in the in the video um but uh we went to the hospital to find out that it was not a stroke that I was having. So that has been ruled out. Um, I'm, I still have a headache now since May 1st. So it's, it's very mild now compared to what it was. Um, but uh, this would be like the longest stroke, I think. What has it been, three weeks or maybe a little better than three weeks? Um, so stroke is ruled out uh, basically right away. Uh, the next thing was... Uh, I forget what it's called, something about a brain bleed thing. So after we did uh, the, I don't even know what you call it. They like basically get you to do all these little exercises, if you will. And uh, something, I don't know. Anyways, we did went to get a CT scan, which I actually got at a different hospital. The way I filmed it, I didn't film very much of the hospitalness because... I don't know. It's kind of awkward to just be like, hey, doc, do you mind if I film this? And then they, I didn't want them to think I wasn't taking things serious because this was, like, I definitely wanted to get whatever was happening solved. Um, but uh, I did film some stuff. I, I only filmed maybe four days worth of stuff. Uh, and I think I was hospital stayed 
six days, but off and on. So one, the first time was overnight. I was able to go home the next afternoon or so. And uh, then I came back as I had more episodes. Um, and then also I was getting these low pressure heads. Anyways, I'm getting ahead of myself. We do the CT scan. CT scan says that I'm good, more or less, I guess. Um, but the doctor was like, hey, bro, this is, doesn't mean that it's everything's good because obviously something's happening. Um, I was really worried that they weren't going to believe me because I thought it was, I thought it was dumb to go to the hospital to, to remedy a headache. I know that people get really bad migraines, uh, cluster headaches, thunderclap headaches, and all these different headaches. I saw a lot of your guys' comments, um, uh, talking about the things that you've gone through. I don't think so far anyway, that I, these are the same thing. Not to say that your pain wasn't unbearable, but nothing like that. Cause I'm sure, I mean, I'm not the only one who feels pain, obviously. Um, but migraines were also ruled out, um, so far, unless there's a, uh, uh, some sort of other type of headache that they haven't, uh, talked about yet. Um, Migraines are, are ruled out unless it's a possible tension headache that is just lasting a really long time. And basically they explain that a tension headache is uh, when you exert yourself, something, they explained it way better than I'm about to, but something in your head uh, releases pressure or something, something pressurizes your brain in it. There's nowhere for your brain to go because your head is is like a rock, right? Your, your skull, right? It's hard. It doesn't, doesn't flex. <laughs> if it does flex, that's probably something else is wrong. And so your brain has nowhere to go and that's what's causing the pain, something like that. Um, and it should subside within hours, uh, which did the first time after about three hours or maybe five hours. Can't remember. The second time I think was worse. Um, the second time was worse. Yeah. Um, anyway, they wanted to do a lumbar puncture, like of the spinal tap. And that was going to see if there was a brain bleed, uh, basically by seeing if the fluid, the spinal fluid had some discoloration in there. If it was like yellow or pink or red or anything like that. Um, luckily mine was nice and clear. Um, so they did like the visual and they said, well, you probably don't have meningitis or these are, I only remember meningitis because I remember I got a, a spider bite on my wrist, which I thought was a mosquito bite at first. You can kind of, uh, you might not, it might be, can you see that little bit of red right there? This is the longest spider bite I've ever had. Maybe it was something else. Anyways, I thought it was a mosquito bite at first. And I know that mosquitoes aren't the only thing that can like spread meningitis, but you know, I was just thinking, I was like, if I got meningitis from one mosquito, that, what are my, that, my luck is so running out in life. Um, but uh, anyway, said it wasn't meningitis and some other things. I can't remember the other things. Like I said, I remember meningitis because I got bit by what I thought was a mosquito. Turns out, I think it was a spider bite because it lasted so long and then it began to look like a spider bite. Anyway, from there, they said they're going to send off my, my fluid, my spinal fluid to the lab um, to do like stuff that they obviously can't see with their naked eye. I'm not sure exactly what they did, but anyways, stayed overnight for that. Uh, plus pain management, which is basically just some sort of drug. I can't remember what they gave me, but uh, it kind of went away to a manageable state after a few hours. So I just felt like I had a bad headache, like maybe what a migraine is. Now, I can only judge what a migraine is based off of what I went through when I had carbon monoxide poisoning uh, years ago. Um, Years ago, I was working on my car. Um, if you're on my Patreon, you saw me drive the car for the first time in a while. Um, but anyway, working on my car, uh, I had a gas-powered air compressor running in my garage, which is so stupid. 
you should definitely open the door even if you're going to run something for a few minutes because that few minutes is still harmful and sometimes that few minutes turns into a long time like it did in my case because i just couldn't get the stupid uh bracket uh i needed to uh drill a hole in it but it was hardened steel and uh, the drill bit bits that i was using didn't work so i took the air compressor and was using air tools instead um, anyway, I got carbon monoxide poisoning from that. Uh, my blood was uh, 4,000 4, parts per million, I think. But that, I don't know. Oh, I forget now. I used to be able to tell this story pretty easily, but it's been a while now. Anyways, it was really high. And during the recovery, during the actual poisoning, poisoning, whatever you want to call it, you feel great, actually. You feel awesome. Like, I knew I was dying, and I did not care at all. I, like, I felt awesome. But, <laughs> but during the recovery over the next couple weeks, I got these terrible migraines. Uh, I think they're migraines. I don't normally get migraines just in my everyday life. I know a lot of people suffer from those things, and that, like, that sucks. I, I hate that people go through that. Um, but uh, for me, I don't. I don't get migraines. I get headaches, um, like from dehydration or uh, stress, stuff like that. But I don't, I don't get migraines. But then I got terrible migraines for a long time. My mom, this is when I still lived at home, and my mom uh, was like, she tells me now, like, like after I was all good, she told me that I was acting so weird because of these headaches because I didn't know what to do with myself because it was so aggravating and so uncomfortable so she told me that i would like walk outside and go lay on the grass and then walk around the house and yeah i had no idea what to do so i had um tylenol 3 i think for that or something but uh i never took it because the tylenol 3 is it doesn't i get sick from it so um i didn't take it um so anyway Back to the story. Um, that's the headaches I was feeling. And then it was going down and down and down. And then when they gave me the drugs, like I was having the really bad headaches. Then I was getting what I'm going to call the carbon monoxide recovery headaches. And then they gave me the drugs. And then it was going down to like a, just a bad headache. Right. And then I was able to go home. I just basically just chilled. And then uh, came to doing um, like I got I still have some left. I'm after this video, I'm going to go send out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I think there's 15 right there. I ran out of return address labels. So I'm going to deliver those 15, get more labels, and then I'm going to send some more out. I have just a few left. Um, but anyway, I was like, okay, I'm feeling okay today. Let's pack up some orders because people are, you know, thank you for supporting me and my, my uh, April sale. I didn't want anyone to have to wait a long time. So I was just like, you know what? We're just going to pack these up. I feel okay. I'm going to sign and number them. So each one is hand signed and hand numbered, right? And uh, let's see. How many did we? I'll just go over really quick how many we sold. Five, 10, 15. This might be hard to do. 20, 25. 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, uh, 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, 90, 95, 100, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 40, 45, 50, 65, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, 90, 95, 200, 5, 10, 15, 20 wait which pr we sold like 300 or something like that this is too hard to count these because i tallied them um so i was like oh we need to send these out anyways um they don't weigh that much right like even a stack of these they weigh i don't know i probably had 15 pounds worth of prints let's say that might even be generous we had a lot um and we had them in a, a laundry basket with some other stuff too. There was some cutting boards and stuff, but maybe it was 20 pounds altogether. 
So I'm like, not a lot of poundage. Um, but as I lifted it up, that little bit of strain, my head just exploded again. I picked it up and I immediately put it back down. It was so weird. So we go back to the hospital, tell them that. They figure, okay, so we ruled out this, we ruled out that. They do some more of whatever they did. Um, and as I was at the hospital, I they at this hospital in the in the I don't know what it's called in the room that you get assessed in or whatever, right? Where there's a bunch of people, right? You're divided by curtains or whatever. Probably most hospitals have this. I don't know, <laughs> but anyway, as I was in there, uh, sitting on a chair instead of a, a a bed, right? It's a hospital chair. I don't know. It looks like a Santa's lazy boy. It's red. It can recline, which I didn't know the first day, which I wish I did. But anyways, um, at this point, after the spinal tap, I'm suffering from the low pressure headaches and the high pressure headaches. But the low pressure headaches, I can walk around for 15, 20 minutes or so and be fine. It's the high pressure headaches is the ones I was worried about. The low pressure ones are bad and like... It, for those of you, I saw a lot of comments saying that you guys got epidurals and spinal taps and things, and you got those pressure headaches. Some of you said they lasted for up to six months. Luckily, mine are gone now. Uh, but at the time, dang, they were bad. Um, but I was willing to go through those because I appreciate you guys. And like, it was just like a bad headache. It wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't like stabbing pains of like death. <laughs> um, so anyways, we go to the hospital. I find out that it can recline, which is so good because the lying down is good. Um, but I'm uncomfortable in this chair and I stretch just like a morning stretch, you know, like a dog does when it wakes up from a nap. That's what I do. And I get another one of those headaches like it, cause it was coming down after about five hours or so. I was at the hospital, uh, maybe five hours, maybe something like that. Anyways, I stretch after I'm feeling good because I got the, the drugs and stuff. Um, I get the, I do the stretch and it just comes back again. And I was like, what the hell? I have the IV and I, I'm stretching. There's no exertion. I'm not lifting anything. All I'm doing is, what is that, flexing? I don't know. And I get it again. And I'm just like, gah. So I tell the doctor. He's like, okay, so blah, blah, blah whatever. Um, I go home later. They set up the neurology appointment because they, um, actually they set up the neurology appointment earlier because they found uh, some anomalies in my fluid, but they uh, did something. I don't know. Anyways, I go, I'm waiting for my neurology appointment. Um, I may, I'm forgetting some of the story here, but the, the main things are there. On the day of my neurology appointment, the evening before, um, I haven't been sleeping, right? So I, well, I sleep, but like I usually fall asleep pretty late, usually in the morning, right? Um, this particular time, I'm trying to go to sleep. So I go to get my headphones, listen to some music and fall asleep to some music. And uh, my headphones fell behind my bed, like, you know, at the head of the bed or whatever. I don't have a headboard, so it's just a crack. Right. And uh, I go to like reach for them and get them. And that bit of straining, right? Just having a little bit of, uh, I don't know, it's like a stretch and like frustration, some slight frustration because I can't find them, but I know they're there. And I get it again. This massive bad headache. This was the worst one I've had so far. So this was like the fourth one, the fourth one that I've had. And, uh, I, I didn't know what to do. This was the by far, by far the worst one. And like, I tried to do like, uh, like meditation. I don't meditate. So I don't know what that looks like exactly, but I was just trying to <sighs> calm down, chill, lower my heart rate. Cause it's everything. So one of the things is they said, keep your heart rate low. Uh, cause your blood pressure is, is really high. Like it was like, not super high, but pretty high, like 180 over 150-ish, 160-ish, something like that. So that's high, right? That's too high for to be normal, but it's not like... Um, I used to have really high blood pressure when I was 
you know, in my teens, it'd be 190 over, uh, no, what, two, yeah, 190 over 100, something like that. So this was one of the numbers. I can't remember. Ashley explained it to me. She said it's the bottom number is the most important one, and you don't want that to be super high. So that one, I think, was high. Anyways, it was high, and they were like, bro, you got to, so I was trying to lower, like, I could feel my heart beating in my head. And it was like, it was like, that was the thing. I thought my blood flowing up there was the thing that was doing it. Cause every heartbeat was like, <sighs> and it was quite fast. So I was trying to lower my heart rate and, uh, I wake up Ashley. Um, she, uh, she checks my blood pressure and she does, uh, whatever. I don't know, whatever nurses know how to do. And, <laughs> and uh, and then she's like, okay, let's go to the hospital. Like I tried to be super chill, but it didn't work. So we go to the hospital. And unfortunately this time, uh, and I was happy to wait because people have worse things than me going on at this point. I could see uh, two, two ambulances came in and they were both trauma uh, related. Unfortunately, one of the people passed away. I was perfectly happy to wait. I wish I didn't have to, but you know, that's horrible. And I can still like at this point, I know some people say their headaches are so bad that they, they can't even think straight. They can't see straight. None of that. Fortunately for me was happening. I could see everything fine. I could think fine. Uh, I was like, I could see everything good. No blurriness, no dizziness. I could think about like when people asked me questions, I knew what I wanted to answer and I could answer, I could talk and everything. But yeah, I definitely did not want this to happen, but I was thinking those people and their families, they're going to be devastated. Obviously the person who passed away, they're not going to feel anything, but you know what I mean? Right? So I was just like, okay, I'll just chill here. And, uh, yeah, the hospital I went to is, is a small hospital. So smaller staff and all that jazz. And then there was a guy who had a broken leg. Well, I thought it was a broken leg. He couldn't walk. And so anyway, he, I thought he had a broken leg and I was like, okay, well, he'll probably go before me. But, uh, fortunately, or I don't even know how to say it. Uh, gratefully, I guess that's not even proper English. Um, I was like, I was the first person in and they had something. I don't know. There was very short staff at the moment. So I got all the attention because of my, uh, whatever they deemed the most serious, right? Whoever is the most serious is seen first. I don't know how it works everywhere. I'm, I'm sure that's probably standard, at least in Canada. that That's standard. Every hospital I've been to, uh, whenever I needed to go to the emergency, I've never had to wait. And I think that's because, so in Canada, we have socialized medicine. So everyone can go to the hospital and it doesn't cost anything out of pocket. So everyone goes even for things that, you don't necessarily have to go to the emergency for you could go see your regular you know doctor but a lot of people don't do that and also um you know there's different reasons for for faking things or for going for minor things but anyways i don't do that i've never done that and i never will do that i will only go if i have to so I, luckily every time i've gone to the emergency i've been i've never had to wait this time i did have to wait because they were all busy with trauma. Um, but anyways, I get in, they do their stuff. They give me the IV really quick this time, which was nice. Um, and th this morning bled into the afternoon, which then turned into my neurology appointment at the neurologist, which is not at the hospital at the hospital. I saw, uh, or neurology team saw me, but like behind the scenes, I never spoke to them directly they went through the whatever the system however it works for me uh my neurology one-on-one -on -one was with a doctor at his doctor's office and uh, they referred me to him because so a neurologist is, is a specialty right I, I imagine most people would know that that would be a specialty when you're a doctor you usually specialize in something his specialty was was neurology and his expertise is is uh specifically weird headaches. Um, so 
when they're like not like it's like uh, an anomaly or whatever. He's the guy apparently who you want to see, according to my hospital doctors who were like, dude, this guy is good. Like the one doctor I saw, he was like, he's like, what? Who's your neurologist? And I was like, oh, it's Dr. Whatever his name is. And he's like, oh, oh, wow, that's really good. Yeah, he's and he explained like the whole thing. And I was like, oh, well, that's good. So I was like, all right, we go to see him. Uh, he did all these manual assessments or whatever, right? And uh, he looked in my eye. Guys, I had the headache. I had the residual headache, but after the drugs, it had come down, but I still had the headache. So, you, you know, sometimes when, when you have a headache, for those of you who get migraines and, and the like, sometimes you'll, you'll do like a, like a cringe face. Well, I was doing that because I would get the occasional explosion of headache, and uh, but it just lasted for a heartbeat, let's say, or maybe like one or two seconds, right? And so I was doing that, and I was trying not to do that for some reason. I'm at the doctor. Maybe I shouldn't have, you know, I was being as honest as I could, right? We told him everything. Uh, but anyways, he goes and looks in my eyes with, a, you know, the thing, like the little you know what I'm talking about, like what an eye doctor looks in, like a little pen, right? He's like, and he's shining a light or whatever. But <laughs> he got so close to my face that I almost started laughing. Whoops, sorry if that was loud. That I almost started <laughs> laughing. So he's right here on my face, right? If you can just imagine just being like this close to someone's face and I'm just like, Try not to laugh because I just not used to someone being that close to my face. Um, anyway, he looks in my eye and he could see. Oh, what did he say? He said he saw high blood pressure and something else. But I was like, from my eyeballs? What? He didn't even take my blood pressure yet. He took it later, but. I thought that was amazing. Dude, they can see your blood pressure from your eyeballs. He didn't give me no numbers. He just said that it was a little high. But uh, anyways, he explains what he thinks it is. Um, I asked him about, oh, yes. So a lot of comments here were saying, how come they didn't do an MRI? So the hospital docs explained to me that when a CT scan and a lumbar puncture taken together don't show uh, like some sort of devastation or anomalies, uh, they uh, won't do an MRI until they rule out some other things. So they booked uh, the neurologist to give his opinion. And so here I am at, at him. He looks in my eye, whatever. I explain to him uh, what's going on. And then I ask him about an MRI because at the hospital, they were contemplating it. Uh, they just didn't end up doing it. And I saw that some people said in your guys' comments in the in the vlog video said that the only thing that found whatever was your ailment was only found in the MRI. So um, it's not that they're not going to do an MRI with me. It's just they haven't yet. And maybe they won't have to. So uh, my neurologist, um, uh, what is it called? An angiogram. He got me to do a, I'm going to do an angiogram. Um, and the good news is that he didn't book it urgent and I don't know why exactly I'm going to trust him, but, and hopefully it doesn't, hopefully it's not bad. Uh, but, uh, my angiogram is not until July 15th, which is a long ways away, which sucks for me to have to wait unless I have another episode, then it'll be when I go to the hospital, it'll be right away. Um, hopefully that doesn't happen. Today, I feel super amazing. Uh, I don't, this, Ashley asks me every day, how's your headache? Scale of one to 10. 10 being, so at the hospital, they'll ask you, how much pain are you in? Scale of one to 10, 10 being the worst you can imagine. And I was like, I even said this, I'm like, well, how good is your imagination? Because mine is great. I'm like, I'm going to give you a scale of one to 10 of headaches. This is 10, 
I almost said 11, but I didn't want them to think that I was embellishing anything. So I said 10 and I'm like, and I'm like, these are the other painful things that I've gone through. Right. And I was like, so broken shoulder, I'd much rather have that fire would much rather have that getting shot by nail guns would rather have that getting a nail through my foot. Oh yeah. That's another thing. I didn't tell you guys that I would rather have that. It actually was a screw. I would rather have that all these things. And then they're okay. I'm like, nah, nah, nah. And I actually, I called it blinding pain. And they're like, so you actually couldn't see? And I was like, not actual blinding, but like so painful that it's, it's indescribable, it seems. Anyway, uh, where was I? Angiogram? Oh, yeah. If I have another one of those episodes, I will get a MRI uh, or I'll get an angiogram. They'll figure that out. So if you don't know what an angiogram is, I don't know exactly what it is, but um, Ashley described it. Well, they described it to me too, but I asked Ashley yesterday or a couple days ago. Um, if you're on my Patreon, I've already explained all this stuff to you guys because I was feeling pretty good the other day too. Um, but anyways, angiogram, it, so a CT scan looks at your, 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 I don't know how to explain it, but they take pictures in sections of your brain. So they showed it to me. Um, like I took, I even took some pictures of the, of the CT scan, but it's like in layers. I took, I took a picture of my eyeballs because I thought it looked cool. Um, but anyways, it goes through all the different layers and you could see my brain was, it was fine. Like it was all, it looked normal. I mean, I don't know, but they told me that's what it's supposed to look like. So I was like, okay. Um, and they even at the neurologist, he went through it again and he showed me that it was normal because of whatever. Right. Um, and then, and then he told me that my spinal fluid had uh, elevated protein in it. And that was maybe concerning, or maybe I just have high protein because some people just have higher, whatever. Like, uh, when I was like a teenager, I had lots of testosterone, which was normal for me, but it can be dangerous in some ways for, for certain folks. Right. Um, and I don't know, I haven't had a, I don't really go to the doctor, so I don't know what my shit is now, but I do have to go for a, a thing here right away. Anyway, angiogram is scheduled for July 15th or yeah, July 15th. I wish it was sooner, but it's not. I did have to go in the vlog. You said you heard that I had to go to a doctor's appointment, did that one. Um, I have another one on Tuesday, Tuesday. I think next Tuesday and Tuesdays is going to be um, uh, for family doctor. I have to get a family doctor. So that one's probably not going to tell me anything. Obviously, I'm going to have to tell him his stuff. He may have an opinion or he may not. He may order an MRI or he may not. I don't know. I just need a family doctor because I don't have one. So that's what that one is. I think it's on Tuesday. Ultimately, it doesn't matter to you guys, but <laughs> I should know this. But anyway, um, uh, yeah, that's that's my story. Uh, I probably forgot a lot of things. Like I said, I didn't film everything, but I went a, a lot. I did a lot more than I showed, and I'm forgetting things too. But yeah, um, for those of you who have had tension headaches, migraines, or anything close to it. I feel very sorry for you. I know there were some people who said that like it gets better because you get used to it. I think what you have, if you have that opinion, which you're totally, don't take this the wrong way, but I think that you have something different because whatever this was, I don't, I don't, I can't fathom how anyone could get used to it. Like uh, my brother, Jakota, he said that it sounded like I had the suicide disease. I forget what it's actually called, but that, that's the whatever. And I'm not saying I'm going to suicide myself. I'm not. I hope not. Uh, but that is like, I was like, so he explained that to me because he's a big fan of Travis Barker, uh, the drummer from Blink-182 and other uh, side projects and whatnot. But uh, 
my brother Dakota is a drummer as well. Big fan of Travis Barker and Travis Barker used to have whatever that is. I forget what it's actually called. Uh, and I'm not saying that I have that. I, I probably don't. Um, but just what I'm saying is like when people say that, that they found ways to cope with it and they're coping, it, it's a little mild, it seems to me, because nothing works for me. But I am willing to take anyone's, uh, like when you comment these things, like I'm grateful. I mean, sometimes they're a little snarky, like some people think I'm faking it. I will never, ever, ever fake anything for views or whatever. I don't care if I don't do YouTube. I mean, I like doing it and it's fun and I like interacting with you guys, but I will never fake anything uh, outside of things that are supposed to be funny. I will never fake anything that's of a serious nature because there are so many people who go through these types of things like health issues and stuff. And, like it's not funny and it's not, it's not, I mean, I hope you're entertained by that video, but like, I didn't, I didn't mean for that to happen. Right. It just, it just did happen. And that's why I made a video out of it. Uh, I will never fake anything like that ever, ever. I will never. Um, which brings me to another thing. Um, Ashley told me on the curiosity fan crew, I forget what it's called. The crew fan, the group for curiosity Inc.'s fans, uh, that, I forget what her name is. This this lady made a group for Curiosity Inc. If you don't know who Curiosity Inc. is, you should go subscribe to their channel because uh, if you like my channel, uh, I started doing YouTube more seriously because of Alex from Curiosity Inc. Anyways, there's a fan page there, and uh, Ashley told me, my wife Ashley told me that people were thinking of doing a GoFundMe. Uh, I, we, I super appreciate that, but we don't need it. Curiosity crew. That's what it's called. What did I call it? Fan crew. <laughs> um, uh, I appreciate the, the, the love and everything. Um, but I don't need that. And I probably wouldn't accept it anyway, because, um, there's like other things that you can do. Like, I appreciate you guys is supporting all that stuff. Um, like that's amazing to me that anyone would even care. Uh, that like, and it's a lot of fun to have fans, but I will never take advantage of anyone ever. Not, I don't know hardly any of you guys, right? Even though I don't know you, I still want you guys to be like, what's the word? I want you to trust me and, uh, I want you to feel secure. Is that the word? in your support of me if you would like to support me because obviously i can't work as if you watch the video you can buy my art that's amazing when you guys buy <laughs> this chair uh i got you know i got these paper prints these are closed what do you call them? limited edition prints i got more than i've shown that one a lot i got lots of these right uh if you Took advantage of the sale they were 50 bucks now they're 150 bucks but uh you can also get paper prints like here's a paper print uh open edition right these are only 20 bucks canadian by the way so if you're american 150 bucks is like 120 ish or something like that these are probably like 15 bucks or something like that um i got a whole bunch of different different ones so thank you but please don't do a GoFundMe. If if ever someone did that for me, I would be super grateful. But I just it it feels a little awkward for me. Just so you know. Um, but I do appreciate it, and I hope you guys know that I appreciate it. That's uh, that's my uh, yeah, <laughs> that's my thing. But if you would like whatever you would donate to a GoFundMe, get something in return for your money. Uh, in, in a form of some sort of art. So if you're going to give $20 to a GoFundMe, luckily these are $20. If you're going to give $5, what do I have that's $5? Oh, I have pencils. Uh, 
I have these. Wait, that's upside down. All right, these are carpenter pencils. Uh, I forget actually how much these are, but I think it's five for ten dollars, and I think they're three dollars each. All right, so you get a deal. Wait, how much are they? Shoot, I forget, but I have it written down somewhere. Anyway, you can get a pack of these for ten bucks. There's only four here, but just imagine there's five. Um, yeah. Anyways, it was five for ten. Ah, see, Matthew. See, me and Matthew, we came up with this product together. So you guys know Matthew. He's my main moderator here. Uh, you guys should also check out Matthew. He he makes jewelry and stuff. He I actually commissioned him to make me uh, a bracelet. Uh, I don't really wear jewelry, but I think I might wear that one. Uh, sometimes you guys uh, send me jewelry. Um, there's a heart one that I think I will wear occasionally, but I don't wear necklaces and, and, and bracelets and stuff. I used to more so, but I don't anymore. But maybe every once in a while I will. But anyways, I commissioned him to make one. But uh, Matthew does a lot more than just moderate. Excuse me, just moderate. He does uh, a bunch of behind the scene things. In fact, he's working on like a really big project for me which involves him watching every single one of my videos. <laughs> and uh, at the very end of it, you will see, I hope it was worth it. It might not be, which he knows. It might just be, I may never do anything with what he's doing. I don't really want to reveal it because it's, it's a surprise. Uh, uh, anyways, um, if you, <laughs> if you want to order anything from me, Right now, I don't have a website. I, I technically do, but it's not set up yet. Got a lot. Uh, we got very busy over the last while as we were setting it up with uh, Miles from AirClix. Um, so we weren't able to finish it. I was hoping to be able to have it done by now, but we haven't. So just order from Josh at gmail.com is the email. All you have to do is just say, hey, I want whatever. And you can find all the, all the pictures, right, of my art on the My Hands Gallery Facebook page. If you don't have Facebook, you can still browse it through Google or whatever, or you can check out my Instagram. It's easier to do it on the Facebook. Eventually, it'll all be on the website, and it'll just be click, right? But pick out what you want. Tell me on my email, orderfromjosh.gmail.com. Uh, give me your address, including your phone number, if you're outside of Canada. If you're inside of Canada, I don't need your phone number, but that's just for customs. I'm not going to call you. I'm not going to none of that I, uh, you don't have to worry about me spamming you or giving it away or anything it's just customs needs it and i don't think they're going to call you either but anyway yeah that and how you'd like to pay i guess we can take any kind of payment i think uh credit card paypal apple pay square uh I forget what all the other ones are, but they're they're all there. Thank you, Matthew. Uh, but make sure you go check out Matthew. Matthew, post your own link. Okay, now that I've explained all that, we have, let's say, 12 minutes left till we're up to an hour, and then I'm going to take off. Um, I'll answer some questions, and uh, if you need some clarification in what I'm talking about, then we'll try to do that. Um, also, when I say that I don't think that you've gone through what I'm going through. I don't mean to say that I'm stronger than you or I'm better than you or I'm worse off than you. It's just the way that I'm interpreting you might be a little off or I just, I don't understand how, how you can cope with like the type of pain that I went through, if it's the same. Oftentimes I guess you have no choice. It's absolutely possible that you have gone through the same thing or worse. Uh, I just don't want anyone to be like offended because I'm like, oh, I'm going through the worst thing. Sorry about the squeak, by the way, because that is not at all what I'm trying to convey. So uh, anyone who has said they've gone through something and I said, no, I don't, I try not to be brash like, like that. Like, no, you didn't. But I hope you guys understand that. Okay, let's do this. How do I go to live chat? Live chat. Oh, I got some super chats. Thank you so much. Hold on. Let me see these. L Lang sense. Lang sense. I hope you get sorted soon, Josh. Stay well. Thank you. And here's another one. Happy Booker. We love you, virtual friend, Ruth and Carol. Well, thank you very much. 
uh, just says that I have 140. I'm going to go through, find these. Oh, <gasps> shit. Okay, how do I do this? Oh, I can't do it on this one. There we go. Okay. Oh, I can't even see any of them. I can only see one. Okay, so sorry. Whoever sent the other ones, sorry, I can't. I can't go back, but thank you very much. I appreciate that. I'm going to see if I can scroll. No, it just makes me exit it. Sorry about that. Um, I also want to say, oh, Martha donated. Thank you, Martha. Um, uh, oh, Susan. Right. I was going to, I was going to mention this. Um, did they rule out a pinched nerve? Okay. So this was another uh, theory that a lot of people uh, suggested. Uh, they do not think it's a pinched nerve because I don't have any neck pain. I don't have any back pain. I have had pinched nerves in the past and this is not that same kind of pain. The pain that's in my head is local to just my head. Uh, whereas like a nerve pain, it kind of, not all the time I imagine, but uh, it kind of shoots places, right? This is just my head. I can only feel it in my head and the pain is like a, it's, it's a 10 out of 10. The nerve pain I've had in my lower back, I would say after feeling this pain, I would say is like a seven. And the thing about the nerve pain, at least in my experience. Um, so how I got my nerve issues is from lifting a, uh, 418 pound bathtub into my truck by myself uh, years ago. Um, I didn't know that you could smash apart cast iron at the time. So I was just moving it through the house. <laughs> Somehow my helper fell asleep and the, our work situation was a little relaxed. So he, he didn't work for me. He worked for the boss man and the boss man was my friend. And so we were, I was just helping him out basically. He was paying me, but like it was different arrangement than like my normal clientele. Uh, but anyways, I'm pushing this bathtub through the house. I had to get it out of this little bitty bathroom. Uh, you can see a picture of me on Instagram trying to shove it through the doorway. It was just such an awkward angle. Um, we ended up taking all the walls out. I wish we would have waited till all the walls were out. It would have been way easier because I had to put it through all the way the house, through the house, through the whole layout because I couldn't turn it. Um, we ended up taking that wall out, which it would have been easy to just push it out and then push it out the front door. But instead I went out around. Anyways, there's a funny picture of me. Like my legs are up on the wall for leverage and stuff. Anyways, from there I had a lower back, uh, pain from that. And there was some nerve something or other, uh, that pain is bad, but if you, if you guys have had weird whatever pains like that when you like move in these certain ways yeah there's a relief uh if you don't have relief oh man I, that sucks a lot um every once in a while it acts up um on my, one of my last visits to uh, my friend landon who you've seen on my channel uh, when i was helping him drywall his ceiling um i got it again and uh I couldn't, I walked like an old man. I, I could take steps, but very short steps. I was like shuffling. I tried to ignore it, but it is, it's too, it, like, it's not that the pain you can't ignore, which, I mean, you definitely feel it. But sometimes, like, for example, uh, if you, uh, okay, when I shot myself through the thumb, I kept working because I needed to finish something and the safety guy was on site and I didn't want him to know that I shot my thumb because uh, you can get in trouble for that sometimes for negligence. I didn't show any negligence, but sometimes safety guys can be assholes. So I just kept working. No one knew that I shot through my thumb until he left. And then I, then we pulled it out. Um, it hurt a lot, but you can kind of push through it sometimes, right? My back, 
I tried to do that. I tried to just push through it and just walk normal across the street because we were we had to jaywalk where we were. Otherwise, I would have had to walk all the way to the corner. And I was like, I can't do that. It's too far. I'm um, too much pain. And uh, so I tried to shuffle across the street, and there was a car coming. And I was like, shoot. Okay, man up. <laughs> oh, I couldn't do it. I I made it me go even slower. Um, but if I stood. Like, just so, it was fine. Didn't feel it. With my head, there is no relief no matter what I did. It just eventually subsides after hours. And uh, except for the one time, it, it subsided after. It was relatively short. Um, but, you know, it's, it's just, uh, I don't know how to explain it. It's just a different pain. Anyway, I don't have, so they thought maybe... There was some sort of nerve thing in my neck uh, to answer the question after a long ass story here. Um, they got me to move my neck all around. They got me to do these things that I guess would would demonstrate that that would be it. And there's nothing. In fact, the only neck pain I've got is from staying like very rigid and my jaw started hurting as well because I was just, I was just, Trying to just, I don't know. I was trying to do everything, which is there nothing helped. So I don't know why I kept doing it. But I just tried to stay as still as possible and as like stiff. I don't even know why. But anyways, all the stiffness for hours caused some neck pain. And uh, it was like right here. It was like, you know, like uh, when you sleep wrong and, and, and your neck... I don't know, maybe your pillow was too big or too small or whatever, or your head was just, that's the kind of neck pain I got, but no nerve thing. That was another thing that was suggested. Um, again, people said, I know what you're, what you're, what you're going through because of nerve things. Uh, not to say that your nerves problems are not very painful and, you know, can even be debilitating, but this is, this is not that this is to me, in my experience, it's far worse. Um, oh man, or Hannah has got a tornado alert. Hannah is like an Alabama girl. They get a lot of tornadoes over there or, uh, Mississippi. Sorry. I always say Alabama cause she's from the South. And when I think South, I think Alabama, she's from Mississippi. Uh, yeah. So today I feel so much better. Like I said earlier, or started to say at least. Ashley asked me what my pain is, one to ten for headaches. I think I didn't even finish saying this. I think I, sorry, my ADD brings me all over the place, but I hope I'm making sense. But uh, Ashley always asked me multiple times a day, one to ten, and I've been saying one for the last few days. I did say two, um, but no, today is a one. Today is the best day so far. Like. I feel fine. And the thing that sucked the whole time is I've looked fine the whole time. I just looked like I was angry or sleepy, right? That was another thing I was worried about at the dock or at the hospital. I was like, guys, I probably look fine and I probably sound fine, but I'm not fine. <laughs> like I really wanted them to believe me. I was just worried that they wouldn't because sometimes when you go to a hospital and I don't want to say that healthcare providers are all like this because they're definitely not, but like their jobs are stressful and they know when someone is faking it and, or they like you ever go to a hospital and you can see someone being like rolling their eyes, not literally because that's unprofessional. I'm sure sometimes they do, but you can just see someone not believing a person because and you get it because you also don't believe the person, right? I remember one time uh, I went to the hospital for, uh, I think, for my shoulder. And, uh, or what was it for? I can't remember. But anyways, the one lady was getting sick of waiting, right? And uh, um, uh, the waiting room was quite large. It's one of the... The, the main hospitals, let's say, in the city. <laughs> and she went to the, 
door of the waiting room, right? And uh, she waited for this. I think she was a nurse, but she could have been anyone. I don't know what she was. But she she's walking down, and uh, she's small. She's a small lady, like smaller than me. I don't know. She was Asian. So if you can imagine just a small Asian lady, right? She's walking down. And the, the lady who was sick of waiting, she goes to the door and she and she's a larger lady. She pretends to faint right as the nurse or doctor or whoever she was comes like goes by her and she she's like, oh, and she like kind of grabs her sort of, but in a weird way. And the 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 girl or the late the the hospital lady i'm just gonna call her a nurse i think she was a nurse because she was wearing scrubs and doctors wear lab coats not always but anyways she's trying to hold this lady up and she she's like trying to call the like it's behind glass the emergency so you have to go through like a like a you know at grocery stores they have those doors you have to go through one of those anyways she's trying to hold this lady up <laughs> who timed it perfectly and everyone in the waiting room, not everyone, but a lot of people were like, Oh, come on. Like no one, no one fell for it. Uh, and I don't think the nurse lady did either, but you know, you never know. She might not be faking it. So they bring her in right away. And, uh, I remember seeing her later and, uh, I can't remember what she was there for. Uh, it's none of my business anyways, but anyway, uh, she was gone. She was. She left way before me. Um, it was. Uh, it was a thing. Anyway, I was worried because I went to the hospital for a headache. I looked relatively fine, uh, and I spoke relatively well. That they would just be like, "Okay, this guy just." Because even the one uh, doctor, she was like, "Have you tried Tylenol?" And I was like. <laughs> Yeah, I've tried Tylenol. Like, I didn't say that. I was just like, oh, my God. Which makes me just think that people go there for just anything. And so I was worried about that. Um, so I was trying to be as honest as I could um, and explain everything, anything. I was like, I'm like, I don't care about being embarrassed or anything. I was like, dude, I can't even take a shit without this happening. Too much information, I know. But that that's true. I can now, but at the time I couldn't because I don't know. It was just really bad at the time, but now I'm good. Uh, oh, now you answer me, LOL. Not in the cheekbone area. Uh, I'm not sure what you're talking about, Angel. Now you're answering me. Not in the cheekbone area. I don't have pain in the cheekbone area. I did have it in my teeth, but I think... I don't know. I think that was something else. Uh, I think it's because he has less facial hair than you. What? Uh, correct diagnosis is critical. My dad had a stroke in his basilar artery. And first doctor was rude, did something to his ear and sent him home. Sicker than when he arrived. See, that happens too. The thing is, is you got to... I don't know where you're from here. Like in Canada, we have socialized medicine. So people take advantage of it. They Some people are drug addicts and they want pain meds, right? And that's sad when people are, become addicted to drugs that they, they, they compromise trust and stuff. But like addiction is addiction. When you're addicted to something, it's, it's, it's in your head, right? You can't, oftentimes you can't help it. And so you do these things. But as, the, as a person who's not addicted like me, I don't think I'm addicted to anything. Um, it's hard to sympathize with that. So you just get frustrated, right? And then sometimes you just assume other people are doing the same thing. Um, and that's terrible. So for me, I'm I'm going to be like, bro, we need to, to figure this out. I'm like, I'm not faking it. I never will fake it. I even told them, I was like, I'm like, look at my hospital. I don't know if they keep the records like Josh came to hospital for this, 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 and this. I don't know how, how it's, how they can look it up, but I was like, just look at my shit. Tell me I haven't ever have that. I've ever come here for something that has not been serious. Broken shoulder, carbon monoxide, carbon monoxide.
What else? I think that's it. Oh, uh, heart thing. That's it. Cardiovascular health, not dying health, not dying health, and broken shoulder health. I don't know what that would be called. What's a bone doctor called? What's a bone doctor called? Orthopedic health. Is it ortho or is that mouth? Orthodontist? Orthopedic. I don't know. Uh, the sciatic nerve is on the lower extremities. Uh, oh, yeah, and the bee sting. Right. I went there for that too. Right. And I wasn't even going to go for that. Well, I never explained that to them because I, I think I forgot about that. Although one of the nurses remembered me from that. She's like, uh, the room, remember when I, in the vlog where I said, this is the same room that Jean was in? She remembered me. Uh, cause she was asking, what did she ask? She said something to the effect of, uh, have you been here before? Or when's the last time you've been here or something like that. Right. And she was fine. This is when I got my, my smile tap. She was super chill. She was just like, she was actually probably, probably my favorite nurse in terms of, uh, uh, like attitude, not attitude, what do you call it? Personality. Um, I had another nurse who was really good, who uh, um, was like, her IVs were like, I didn't even feel it. Like, um, like I did feel it, but I'm, I'm lying. I did feel it, but it, it wasn't painful, uh, really. Um, but anyways, I told her for, for the beast thing. I think she was just trying to like, take my mind off of the the lumbar puncture thing, um, which a lot of people were saying that when you had that, it was super painful. For me, it was painful, but they gave me freezing, which made it just feel more so weird until they got to like a certain point where I could feel it. It felt like, a, like a, even when someone pokes you in the kidneys, gives you a kidney poke, that's kind of what it felt like. It didn't feel harsh so i don't know if you guys went through it without anesthetic because they gave me like the anesthetic hurt more right and so weird because they put it in right it was like a needle that was maybe like this long right that's standard right put it in there and i could feel like freezing not like cold, but like the numbness. I could feel numbness. And I was like, wow, that feels so strange. And then they stuck in that long ass needle and uh, I could feel it. I'm sorry if this is making you squeamish. I'll get off this subject here right away. I could feel it, but it, it felt more like not sharp. It felt like someone was pushing hard on my spine. So you could feel it and like it was uncomfortable, but it wasn't painful. Uh, any small tinkering going on, Josh? No, I haven't done anything. So I am I am not going to do anything because I do not want this to happen at all ever again. So until I have the all clear, if they tell me it's a tension headache, I will be elated because that means I don't have brain tumor, which means I don't have cancer. Uh, that's, by the way, low on the... They don't think it's that. They think that they think it's that the least. The highest thing they think it is is an aneurysm. I also don't want to have an aneurysm because sometimes they're inoperable, and then you always have to be careful, uh, depending on how serious it is. Uh, however, sometimes they can put in a. I think they call it a shunt. Uh, sometimes they can remove it, uh, and sometimes they they can do a, a, a blockage of it or something. So a blockage. They explained all the different things, but if it's not an aneurysm, that would be awesome. But so far, they think that it, it most likely is because of the way it manifests. Um, so I still have a headache today, right? What's the date today? So 25th, so that's 25 days of headache. But today, like I said earlier, Ashley asked me every day, 1 to 10. Today, I was like, 
today is a one. Yesterday was not a one. Today I feel better than yesterday and the day before. Yesterday and the day before were, were the same. And then the day before that, it was a little worse. But like I've been saying one for a long time because it's going down, which is good, which means it could be a tension headache. So let's cross our fingers. It's just this tension headache has lasted a long time. However, sometimes people's tension headaches last for a whole month. And it's almost been a month. So I just might be one of those people when they get one, it lasts a long time. There's also a thing called a cluster headache. Uh, I might okay. Forgive me if I'm if I'm mixing this up, mixing my headaches up. There's a headache that you will get periodically that is very bad, that lasts a long time and then goes away, but then it comes back again, like at, like it's a condition where it'll come back. Uh, whereas a tension headache usually doesn't come back. I think, I hope I don't have cluster headaches. If this is what a cluster headache is, they don't think it is because uh, just the way that it manifests um, and, and also your pain management is different. It's because you can take, well, I don't know if everyone can, but you can take um, drugs for it. Whereas so far, there's no drugs that have worked for my headaches. Uh, except for the low pressure ones, it works for the low pressure ones, but for the high pressure ones, it just subsides after hours. Uh, I still took the drugs, but it, it didn't help. And like I, if you guys missed it or are just ju jumping in here, um, while I was on the drugs, I got one, one of the high pressure headaches from stretching, like literally just, uh, I didn't do that, but just trying to demonstrate the type of stretching, right? I was just uncomfortable in this chair and I just stretched and then it just was like, and I was like, God damn. I didn't actually say anything, but Ashley was in the hospital with me. She was sitting like right there. She's not here today, but, or down here today. She's uh, probably outside doing something. I thought I would do a live here because we're waiting for someone to send an address because I'm going to go drop it off. Um, after we finish here but um anyway she saw that it was it was bad um oh i got another super chat uh who's this patty good to see you smile please buy ashley flowers nurses know too much and i'm sure her worry meter was off the charts uh okay i will i'll buy her a plant she loves plants um and then i got another one here from bunny kick butt <laughs> she didn't say anything or he he or she didn't say anything but thank you both very much if i've missed any sorry i'm kind of just trying to keep on track with what i'm trying to say because i know there's a lot of questions um uh also thank you for oh and martha you missed super chats from bunny kick butt patty Seely, and myself well thank you martha kick butt and Patty and Martha again, <laughs> you're awesome. Uh, are there any other questions that I missed? I mean, there was a lot of questions. I purposely didn't uh, real answer any of the questions on on the the, the vlog because I didn't want it to get super long, thready. I did answer some. This is not from the COVID vaccine. I know that. Some people are getting, uh, like with their, uh, what do they call it? Vaccine injuries or whatever. I know that's a thing. Uh, I also know that it's super political. Uh, but in my, uh, instance, it's not from the vaccine because I never got vaccinated. Uh, and I didn't not get vaccinated because of any political reason. I just didn't because I, I was too lazy. Um, uh, that sucks. That is bad for people. Um, it's not bad for anyone that I know so far, luckily. Everyone who I know who's gotten it is fine. Uh, I know I've, it's a whole thing, and people are going to have their opinions. My opinion is I don't freaking know. I'm not. I'm, who, who studies vaccines? I don't even know. <laughs> a virologist? I, I don't know. And I prefer. 
to not get into arguments about stuff like that because I have no, what do you call it, expertise on the matter. Um, I wouldn't have anything to add that has any substance attached to it because I'd just be like, I don't know, I heard this. You heard that, I heard this, and now you're mad at me. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a thing. So I didn't get, I didn't get the vaccine, so it's not, it's not from that. Uh, I didn't, I don't take any medications. Uh, some people were thinking maybe, uh, some sort of medication didn't agree with me. Uh, also someone was saying something about a blood infection or, uh, was it blood infection? I don't think I have that. Uh, they never told me anything about that. So I imagine it's not that, but we never talked about it, but they never told me anything. So I imagine that's not a thing. Um, Oh, I should also say that the elevated protein in my spinal fluid uh, could just be something, it could be nothing, or it could be something completely unrelated to my headaches, or it could be for my headaches. I forgot to say that earlier, or because it might cause the headaches. Uh, could a headache be a side effect of having corona? I, I told them that I did get it. Uh, I told them that for me, it was really mild. It was, it was not bad at all. Just that I lost my taste and my smell, but, uh, they never said, um, anything about that either. They may have contemplated it among themselves maybe, but they never told me about it. I told them that I had it and they, that was it basically. Um, they did the screening of course at the, like, you can't, well, you can go to the hospital if you have it, but like, it's a different process or whatever. Um, and, uh, and then I told them that I did have it. And then I told them again, when I was seeing the actual doctor, cause I think it's, uh, like the greeter, I think is a nurse or maybe a healthcare aide. I don't know what she, what she was, but anyways, she, uh, she, she, she didn't care. And seems like the, the doctor who I saw, I saw like five doctors or maybe six. None of them cared. So then I was like, okay, good. Uh, we need a referral to see a specialist. Right. Uh, uh, no, I said sounds like. What? Some of us have lived longer than you. Know more about it. Uh, Hold on, I don't know what you initially said. And he was having a serious problem that you just made a joke out of. What, what happened? Oh, you're talking to Matthew, I think. Uh, Nadine's daughter had many spinal taps and six brain surgeries, uh, five regarding a shunt in five years. First diagnosed with pseudotumors, cere cerebri, cerebri. And then in November, 2020, she was re-diagnosed and had Chiari decompression, decompression surgery. Okay. That sucks. Uh, was I checked for sounds? Uh, I don't know what sounds is. I don't think so. They did stuff that I didn't know, right? They were doing stuff, right? Because, like, every time I went, they did more stuff. But they didn't really, like, like, the one time I was tired as shit. Like, uh, I hadn't slept all day and then all night and then all day again. So I was, that was... Yeah, I was there from the evening or the early morning until the early evening the next day. No way. How do you say that? The early morning, 3 a.m. till like 6 p.m. or something or 7 p.m. or something like that. That was the long, uh, not the longest because it was felt the longest because I was awake the whole time. The longest was actually when I slept overnight. Uh, but uh, that time they may have checked. I don't think so. but. 
they did stuff that I didn't even care about. I it was not paying. Ashley would have been paying attention. I was like, dude, I got to zone out, which was impossible. But I was like, I was, Ashley did all my talking. Like, I couldn't, I could, I could, I totally could. But it, the, the frustration of having to speak, it didn't make the pain worse, but it just made the pain less bearable. Does that make sense? I don't know. Uh, Uh, oh, I see. Clifton here says, do I have Sands, the Arnold, whatever that is, that last name. Uh, would you have problems from lifting or straining? Alex, Alex's niece and his own niece or their own niece have it as well. Uh, oh, that's what sounds is. Okay. Maybe they freaking did then. I guess that would make sense for them to do that. But I don't remember hearing that. Huh. Maybe I'll have to follow up and ask them. I might forget, but yeah. Uh... So glad you're well enough to face a live stream. Best wishes for good health. Dude, I can't even tell you. I feel like a million bucks. Like if this headache that I have right now, I have to have for the rest of my life and never have what I already had. I will. I will have this forever. Like I took a, a leave. I think it's called a leave, um, which has made it less maybe. I don't know, but that was yesterday. I took it last night. I don't know how long in a leave works, but, uh, dude, I feel so good compared. Like, I feel like I'm so happy today because this is, monumentally better um okay simply sheila thank you suicide brain equals tr trig trigam <laughs> i don't know how to say that trigaminal neuralgia <laughs> neuralgia typically coming in quick short bursts of pain on and off or mine does okay so you have the suicide disease is that what the suicide disease is i feel sorry for you if that's anything like this I, now, don't take my words the wrong way. I understand why people choose to end it. I 100% know it. And if I ever see anyone, like a, you know, a, a terrible, sad story of someone ending their life because of anything similar to what I did, I will 100% agree. Like, there's a lot of... I don't see myself ever committing suicide and I like, it is very sad to me. I've had a few people in my life decide to go that route and like, it's freaking devastating. And I wouldn't want anyone who loves me to be put into uh, that kind of like heartache. So I hope I would never do that. Um, but I totally understand. Now there's a lot of different situations where people d d decide to do that. And I think they're all sad. Most of, let's say most of them are sad, of course. As anyone might agree, some people don't deserve to live. But uh, those are people who are horrendous in other areas. And it's, you know, that's that's a whole different thing. But I got to say, I, I get it. I f get it 100%. Uh, oh, Dave, I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. Uh, I'll leave up to 12 hours. Doesn't work on me at all, by the way. Anaprox is the generic. Okay. It also hasn't worked on me at all, but I've been taking it as, along with... Or, oh, I've also taken... Not at the same time. I can't remember what they advised, but I also took Tylenol, extra strength, and... I want to say Advil, which also didn't do shit. Didn't do anything for the for the low pressure or the high pressure. And Aleve never did either. Um, but you can take more Aleve than you can take the other stuff, like safely. Um, 
So I we switched to Elite, but it doesn't do shit. Uh, but I'm just saying, like, maybe, maybe it did yesterday. But 12 hours, it's been longer than 12 hours. Because I took it at, like, 7 o'clock or something. So 7 to 7. And then what time is it now? It's almost 2. Yeah, there's no way. I feel better. Whatever it is, I hope it keeps. Uh, smoke some marijuana. Honestly, if I had, like I said, I don't smoke anything. I don't drink. I don't do any. I'm like, I'm pretty straight edge. Uh, no judgment on other people who do. I honestly don't care. Uh, it's just my own decision based off of my own life experience uh, with family issues and abandonment issues and stuff like that, right? It's, it's totally a decision based off of those things, not based off of judgment of others. Technically, it's a huge judgment on specifically my my birth parents. But like, if you do, that's totally you, and I don't care even a little bit. You know what I mean? Whereas some people will think that you're a piece of shit for enjoying yourself. Uh, of course, you can abuse things and stuff, and in that case, you know that's not great. But uh, I hadn't thought of it, but I would have tried it at the time of of the pain if I would have thought of it because I know some people like they take what is it CBD uh, and all these all these uh, cannabis related drops and whatever smoking all these things and it relieves their pain uh, and all all sorts of other different things I 100% would have tried it if I would have thought of it but I didn't think of it so I didn't because I always swore that I never would um, do any uh, drugs. Weed is, mm, I don't know if that's a drug per se, but you know what I'm saying. And uh, I would i would definitely break that, not promise, but whatever you would call it, in an instant if I thought it was going to help. There, yeah. Um, does Teespring get part of the money if we buy merchandise? Yeah, they do, but I have uh, one new shirt. You can get this shirt on there, but I also have one new shirt on there. Yeah, of course they do. They like they they make it all. They send it out. Like I don't do anything. All I do is design the thing and put it on there, and I make like I don't know ten or twelve bucks a shirt or something like that. And can't remember. So I have it at the lowest cost. The lowest suggested cost, I should say. I think you can make it so you make zero dollars, but I have it at the lowest suggested cost. Like they give you, I think they give you three suggested costs. There's like like basic, medium, and high or whatever. And I have them all at the lowest because like I don't even know how much a shirt is. I always buy them the samples. So like this was a sample, I think. And so it costs cheaper for me to get it like that. I think I think it's cheaper than even what I could charge you on there. But I don't know for sure. But anyways, yeah. You could make a don't hurt your brain design for those of us who want to support. <laughs> yeah, someone said that I should make a lift with your legs, not your brain shirt. And that's that's hilarious. Maybe I will. Maybe I'll figure out a way to to do that have like a brain with like two legs like lifting i don't know what he would be lifting lifting a compost bin like that doesn't make sense like the context there i like the shirt i would want it even if the context is missing i want it to still be wear, wearable for anyone even if they don't know what it means right like this shirt anyone can wear this even if you don't know what uchi dad is but anyone can wear it because it's just a shirt that has his words on it, right? Keep drinking lots of water too. Dude, I have not drink. I forgot. I have like a bottle here. I have not drinking more water in my life than recently. So with the low pressure headaches, they were like, bro, to help it heal quick, because they didn't do the blood patch. They explained the blood patch to me, but said most people don't need it, so they're not going to do it. Probably because of costs or whatever. I don't know. Because I'm not paying out of pocket 
which you know is is somewhat burdensome on the on the whole system, shall we say? I mean, I'm not a freaking economic scientist. I'm just guessing. Uh, so they're like, hopefully you don't need it because most people don't, but you might get a headache from it. And he explained it like, yeah. and I was like, okay. And he was a nurse, so he couldn't like diagnose anything or what. He was just giving me like his his thoughts on it, right? He's he was an old guy. Ah, uh, it wasn't that old. He was like, I don't know, like fifty five or something like that. And so he was, you know, he's got lots of experience. So he's just kind of being like his ex wife. He told me was a bodybuilder, and she got pressure headache, uh, tension headaches, and uh, hers sound way different than mine because hers are manageable. Uh, but anyways, he then explained something about uh, low pressure headaches with epidurals or something like that. And so I was like, okay, um, your ex-wife has both the headaches that I'm might have. Like I have the one and then maybe I'll get the other one. So I'm like, I was thinking, I was like, dude, I feel fine now. Hopefully I feel fine forever. Uh, I had a headache, but like it was different. It was the high pressure headache. Like uh, I could feel them individually, if you will. Anyways, I go home and then I get the low pressure headaches. And I was like, what the f heck is this? This hurts way differently. And it's not great. Luckily, it was not as bad as the high pressure, but like I was just like, what is this? And he told me, drink a lot of water to replenish your fluids because they took out like this much. Like if there's a vial, right? If you saw the video, you saw the three vials, right? Three vials about this much, right? So he took about that much total, right? Like that's, that's not. He's like, your body is going to work hard to replenish that, but you also have a puncture. So you're, you're going to be leaking. So while that's healing, you're going to be losing and you already have less here. And then your brain is going to rest on your skull and it's not going to feel good possibly. And I was like, okay. He's like, but there's a thing called a blood patch, blah, blah, blah. I toughed it out for too long. So they didn't do the blood patch because it was already 10 days. They're like, well, it usually heals in about 10 days, even for people who have it bad. So if we puncture you again, that could be another 10 days potentially because we know that you get them. So if we puncture you again to do the blood patch. It's a bigger hole. It has to patch the little hole that's going to be below it and that hole as well. And you might be another 10 days or maybe it'll be good tomorrow. Luckily, it was good a couple days later. I was like, dude, what the? F I should have come. I shouldn't have been a freaking tough guy. I should have come in the, the next day. <laughs> but uh, I didn't again, I didn't want anyone to not believe me. So I wasn't going to go in for every little thing. Uh, I knew it was a different headache because of what he explained to me. And I was like, okay, it's temporary. It's fine. It's not the other headaches that 100% I'll go to the hospital every single time because well, now I know it's super, it can be potentially super dangerous, right? If, 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 if it's a, if it's a aneurysm and it ruptures, right? You don't want anything in your head bursting, right? <laughs> so I'm going to go, but for this other thing, I didn't. And then I, I did go, but I also had a, like I had that and I had a, I had a high pressure episode. So I was like, well, we're going to go. And now I'm going to tell him about it and we may as well take care of everything all at once. And yeah. Uh, someone asked if you can drive and if you're able to paint. So I have been driving, but Ashley has been coming with me so that we can switch off. If something happens, uh, I'm still doing all my errands. Uh, I had to skip a bunch, right? So I'm trying to catch up. So I've been going, uh, as much as I can, like right now I'm going to go take these other ones. I'm just waiting for this email to come in, uh, to tell So I'm going to, I got a couple local deliveries to do. So I got, got to wait for that. Um, all that stuff. So I can drive, I can do everything, right? I can even, I can even do heavy lifting, right? To a point I can feel when it's going to happen. 
Like, cause you can feel your, you know, when, uh, you exercise, right. You want to get your heart rate up, right. Get your heart rate up so that, you, you know, you can regulate your, your output, right. If you don't, if you don't do that, you get fatigued really quickly, right? So let's say you're uh, going for a run. If you just sprint, you're not going to be able to perform very well. This might be a terrible example. But if you warm up, do some jogging, do some uh, stretching, do some, uh, you know, low impact stuff, you, uh, your heart rate goes up. You're, already, you're, you're primed, so to speak. Then when it comes to the sprint, you feel good. Because you're already kind of in the zone. Okay. When you work up to it, you feel fine, right? But if you don't work up to it, you feel bad in it. Your heart, you can feel it pounding and just, ugh, feels bad. It's kind of comparable to that in terms of being able to feel that something is, is not optimal. That's kind of how I can feel. Like, so if I lift something heavy, or not even heavy. It can just be anything. If it's closing the car door, okay? That's another one. Closing a car door. That takes no strength at all. But sometimes it's too much for me. And i like, what? I can't close a car door? That doesn't make any sense. I'd be able to close a car door. That takes one Calvin of energy. I don't even know if that's proper measurement, but... I should be able to do that, but then I can feel like my heart's just like, oh, or my brain is telling my heart, hey, I didn't like that. Give me some more blood so we can tell him, hey, this sucks. I don't know how it works exactly, but yeah. So yeah, like I said, I'm an anomaly in that video. If you watched the video, if you didn't watch the video, then go back and watch it. But uh, I'm weird. But uh, I guess I never pretended to be normal. So. Oh, are we buffering? Okay. I think this is good. Did you tell them about Jakota's headaches and vertigo and off chance there could be a genetic connection? Would be great if they found a solution for you both. Okay, right. That was another question that I got a lot. Uh, yes, because I get vertigo too. I don't get it as bad as, as Jakota does, luckily. Okay? He gets it so often. I get it once every couple months and it lasts two days. His, he gets like three times a month and it can last a week. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it lasts longer. He doesn't get it three times a month, but you know, he gets it so often. So anyway, I told him, I told them that I get vertigo and my little brother gets vertigo and they asked for my family history. And we don't know our family history because we didn't, we didn't grow up with our family. Right. So I told them, I don't know. I know my grandfather now, right. I met him a couple of years ago and, I know that he has a beard, but I don't know about his health. So, you know, I don't know. And uh, so they're like, okay, well, whatever. I guess we're going to eliminate things, right? And when it came to the vertigo, they said that this is probably not related to that because oftentimes vertigo is an inner ear thing. And uh, whatever. They did check my ears and they did check my balance and stuff. I'm like, dude, I don't have vertigo right now. <laughs> but uh, they don't think it is vertigo. Uh, oh, we didn't. We didn't buffer. Okay, good. Uh, local deliveries. How are fuel prices over there? Post is probably cheaper than the fuel. Fuel here has gone from one twenty five to one ninety nine. What is that? Euros in the last month? Uh, no, it's cheaper to to deliver them by hand because uh, it costs like fifteen dollars to deliver it through the post office, and it costs me like five dollars worth of fuel if I'm already going to town. 
then it's fine, right? I wouldn't make the special trip, uh, but I'm going to pack mail and I'm going to uh, see Miles uh, to get a couple more prints. Vertigo is debilitating, violent, violent nausea. Yeah, it's not good. I do have to say though, not to say anything about you and your condition, but for me, 100%, I would take vertigo over the high pressure headache. I would not enjoy it, but I, anytime I get it, from now on, I'm going to be like, at least it's not that. Like, if you can imagine, like, I don't know how to compare it. Like, let's say you cut your thumb with a, like, you're cutting an apple. And you slice your, your thumb all the way to the bone. Okay, the only thing that I can say that's comparable, I'm not actually flipping you the bird. Uh, I don't know if it's, okay. You can kind of see the scar right here. Kind of not, but it's there. Oh, thank you, Mac. Very kind of you. Thank you so much. Anyways, there's a there's a scar there. That's from sword fighting with, remember Dilly Dilly Dalton from uh, when I went to LA? I was sword fighting him, and his sword sliced me right on the freaking, sliced my knuckle, or my skin all the way down to the knuckle. Which, by the way, your bones are super, super white. Whoosh, that hurt like a bitch. Um, but uh, what hurts worse is getting your leg cut off by a lawnmower, I imagine. That's not happened to me, but this hurts. Lawnmower cutting your foot off, which one would you choose? You would choose slicing your finger all day long. That's me. I would choose vertigo over these high-pressure headaches. Were you able to get your happy pig? What? I mean... Martha sent another super chat. Thank you so much. Man, Martha is being super Jenny today. I don't know what you're talking about. Happy pig. Hope they find you an, an, you an answer soon. Blessings to you and Ashley. Thank you so much, Delphina. Thank you very much. Uh, I have vertigo, and it is because of central sleep apnea. Nothing to do with my inner ear. It took six months to diagnose. In that time, I had a mini stroke because of not enough head oxygen check it dang yeah see that's crazy yeah no i'm not saying that it's not vertigo they just said that it's usually an inner ear thing um it seems that it's probably not an inner ear thing for at least jakota maybe it is for me although they didn't find anything in my inner ear they said that i have good ears but uh, i can't hear shit often um but neither can jakota that could be a genetic thing um Chakota is almost completely deaf in his left ear. Not completely deaf. Let's say he's he's like half deaf in his left ear. He needs to listen through his right ear. I think it might be the other way around. Me, I can hear the same out of both ears, but oftentimes I can't hear things. Like if Ashley says something, I'll go, what? If she says it the same loudness, the same volume, I still won't be able Whereas sometimes people just need you to like speak a little more clear or just need to repeat something so you can hear. For me, it's just like, dude, I can't hear what you're saying. You're too quiet, right? Um, so my vertigo probably is not inner ear too. I should figure it out. But uh, Mike, my brother, Dakota, he's gone to so many specialists, so many people. He is special in the vertigo department. He just needs to find the right person to figure it out. It's been like... I don't know, 10 years. And uh, yeah, I just can't figure it out. But you were probably a little more diligent than him and myself when it comes to the vertigo thing, and you probably stayed on it. Whereas my brother and I, well, especially my brother, he's just like, well, that guy didn't figure it out. No one's going to figure it out. And then months later, he'll see someone else. And then months later, he'll see someone else. He doesn't see, okay, he didn't know. Let's go see someone. You know what I mean? It's months later or even like a year later he'll see someone else so kind of our fault for not figuring it out i i'm so sorry that you have to go through that that's uh i know that vertigo sucks i hate it and since it caused a stroke in you that's worse vertigo than what i have because i've never had a stroke before uh i'm sorry you go through that uh mine is due to scar tissue secondary from my left 
occipital skull fracture, which allows fluid buildup in my inner ear. Do you have to get like a drain? That's crazy. Yeah, vertigo sucks. So many people have it. Um, I met someone who said that they had vertigo. Who am I thinking of? And then later they're like, never mind. I had vertigo the other day. That is way worse. They had some shoot. I forget who it is. They told me like not too long ago. God, I forget. Uh, hello, Jim. If you have vertigo, you're dizzy and just spin. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, for those of you, did someone ask that or are you telling me? Because I, I know what vertigo is. If I don't, in case you're answering someone else. Yeah, so those of you who don't have vertigo, vertigo makes it seem like things, like you ever go on one of those things at the park? It's like a little basket with like a, a curved handle on it and a, a person can spin you like this and the more you tuck in, the faster you spin and when you get off, you're like, Whoa. or if you play the baseball bat game where you put your forehead on the baseball bat and you spin around and you try to walk in a straight line to go get something, whatever. It's like that, but you're not doing anything to make you dizzy. You just are dizzy. And people, some people say it's like the, the little crystal thingies in your ears being all out of whack. So you have like these different maneuvers. Those don't work for myself or my brother. Uh, I try it every time. Usually makes it worse, but I still try it just to get relief, the potential for relief. Um, but uh, usually what I do for me, because mine is not so severe, it just unfortunately happens semi-often is I will sit down with my head slightly lower. No, how do I do it? I'm just trying to think. Yeah, lower than my pillow. So the my face is off the pillow and my back of my head is on the pillow. And I just stay still with my eyes closed. You know, usually, I don't know, let's say five hours or something like that. And then if I get up, to go to the bathroom or whatever. I usually don't eat because it's like you don't want to throw up. If I have to go to the bathroom, I usually to try to. Okay, so if you make yourself dizzy, say you're spinning in a chair. I was always decently good at those games uh, where you would have to go pick something. Same with uh, when you have the drunk glasses on and your feet are sideways and then it feels all weird. I was always good at those games because you can. You can train your eye on to something that is staying still or you know it's supposed to be. So with the drunk glasses, you look down on your feet, your feet look like you're over here. I don't know if how many of you have seen that or have worn those, but then you, you're trying to walk on a line. I did this in the party program, it was called, which was a school program for grade niners to learn about uh freaking horrific devastation when it comes to drinking and driving uh and other things uh but anyways walking on the line i was like well i'm just gonna look at my feet rather than where i feel my feet because your perception is off i'm like i'm just gonna look at my feet in the glasses and then i i nailed the line i could walk it perfect when I got super dizzy at things, I would just be like, okay, well, I know the ball is straight, so I will just walk straight and ignore the need to want to veer off because I can see the ball is right there. So my eyes are going, woo, 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 woo. I'm just going to refocus every time, and then I could walk relatively good to the ball. Same thing when I have the vertigo. I know that my wall is right here. So if my hand is on the wall, I hopefully won't stumble and and fall down because that's what you want to do. You want to fall down. So I'll feel the wall. It's kind of like a, like maybe what a blind person might do is to follow a wall in a place that they haven't been before. But I have the advantage of, of knowing that the wall is there. So, and then it helps me walk relatively good to wherever I need to go within my own house. Uh, of course, everyone's different. And it sounds like you, some of you are worse. Dark Shadows, thank you so much. Wishing you the best. Thank you very much. I think you answered my question. I was referring to a pig cookie jar from the Curiosity Inc. auction I mailed, emailed you about. Oh, I didn't get it yet because, sorry, my head had exploded. Uh, I didn't get it yet. 
and I honestly, I actually forgot about it, but thank you so much for getting that for me. I will go get it. Um, uh, fuel prices here are per liter. Worked it out per gallon. 1594 US a gallon. Holy shack. Our gas, I think, right now is the dollar seventy-eight a liter. Yeah, your gas is mad expensive. Your fuel. Here in Canada, we call it gas, and in the U.S., we call it gas, even though it's a liquid. We know it's not gas, but we just call it a gas. Um, okay, so I thought this was going to be an hour, but we're almost at two hours. So at two hours, we're going to get off. So if anyone has any more questions, I think I mentioned everything I had meant to. I was going to write some stuff down, but I didn't. Uh, I hope you... Uh, got the gist of what I'm going through. Uh, like I said, right now I'm fine. Not fine as in like 100, but like pretty close. Like I f today is the best day yet. It's good to see you, Josh. I've been concerned about you. Thank you, Teresa. Yeah. So I appreciate everyone's thoughts and prayers and well wishes and lots of messages and i'm sorry if i didn't message you all back i meant to so if i didn't sorry because like there's so many so sometimes i would like click on it and then something would be going on and i would forget to reply maybe but i think most of them so thank you so much uh for all those are you able to paint and drive uh like i said i do drive but ashley comes with me uh i haven't tried painting it i imagine i could but like for the most part, I'm just chilling. If I'm driving anywhere, I take the rest of the day off. I do that and then I chill. I don't want to do it. I don't want anything to trigger it because like I said, some of the smallest things, stretching, closing a car door, tying my shoe, bending over to tie my shoes, going to the bathroom, anything that you can imagine that can cause, even if it doesn't cause elevated heart rates or blood pressure to go up i don't know what triggers it all the time like i'm surprised when it's sometimes though like like i said i can kind of feel it coming up i can feel i'm like like it's like hey stop right and sometimes you want to finish whatever it is right like uh what was a what was one that i thought was super mild oh Picking up the, picking up the the prints, right? I have a, I take them in a laundry basket because there's like a bunch of them, right? And rather than carry them because they all have like the, all the stuff in there, I didn't want anything to fall out, right? Picking that up, I wanted to bring it upstairs because like we're downstairs in the office. I wanted to bring it upstairs, bring it to the truck and go. But like I picked it up and immediately put it down. I didn't drop it, but. I probably felt like I wanted to, but like I couldn't even pick it up and put it on like the table or the desk here. I just picked it up and was like, nope. <laughs> and then I just chilled here. I actually chilled right here, right here on the floor for that's another thing I didn't show in the video. Are we, mo are we monitoring? Are we uh, buffering? That's one thing that I didn't show in the video is, is like the duration of things happening like i i managed to turn off the uh the camera like my phone right but like then i was on the ground like in not in the fetal position but like with my head in the ground holding my head ashley's doing asking me questions which uh, i get but it was super frustrating because i didn't want to talk um but i was there for i don't know half an hour then we go inside, we do the, she does the blood pressure shit. She does all those things. Ah, couldn't have been half an hour. Yeah, it was probably half an hour. Cause she, she was doing all this stuff. But I like, I was like not feeling it. Go inside, do the blood pressure. Yeah. Anyways, first time that we went to the hospital, right? Um, yeah, you didn't get it. Like, I mean, that would have been boring to watch. And also, I didn't want anyone to feel like what they were watching is like, 
you know, I didn't want anyone to feel a type of way where they were uncomfortable. I wanted it to come across like as a, like, this isn't a joke. Like this is something that's serious, but I didn't want it to be like, dang, I wish I didn't watch that. You know what I mean? Right. Cause that's kind of, that's not really respectful to, to the viewer when they're not expecting something like that. Like if you watch a movie that has a lot of gore in it, you, you usually know, but if it's like, you know, surprise decapitation and like if that type of stuff makes you squeamish it's you know if there's no warning on it for me it wouldn't bother me because i know it's fake but you know it's just it's i didn't want you know what i'm saying um maybe they should put a halter monitor on you for 24 hours that would be beneficial uh halter monitor is that But I've had one of those before um, for my home and my ticker, uh, which is some sort of angina. Oh, here's another thing. So they asked me for my uh, my history, my health history or whatever. And I'm like, uh, I don't know what it's called, but some sort of angina. And the uh, triage nurse, the not the first one, but like the, I think it was the third one. She's like, um, no, angina is something that old people get. You are way too young. And I was like, why would I make that up? I don't know that it's for old people. And she's like, I'm like, I'm like, I made a joke. That's another thing. People kept saying that I kept my humor. Well, again, I could, I could function normal. There was just pain. So I still made some jokes. But anyways, as a joke, I said, I'm older than I look. <laughs> I obviously I don't look 80, but or however old old people are. But she said she said 80. She's like, no, old is 80. She didn't even think that my joke was funny. But anyway. She didn't believe me for some reason. And another th they prescribed. Uh, caffeine. That was another thing for to close up my uh, my uh, spinal cord thing because it shrinks your vessels or something like that. Um, but also drink a lot of water. So I don't drink coffee. Um, but I drink Coke. So I drink. So they they're, they're like coffee. I'm like I don't drink coffee. They're like Coke. Drink a lot of Coke. So I drink Coke. Um, and then so the 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 last time I was at the hospital, the worst time, uh, one of the things that we tried before I left, right at the time when I let, went for my headphones, was that the last time? Yeah, for my headphones. And then I was trying to just be chill. Um, we took, because uh, that was, the I had the appointment at the neurologist. So I didn't want to go to the hospital that time because I was like, then we're going to miss the neurology thing. And that's probably more important or whatever. I was like, maybe this will go away, which it didn't. But, uh, uh, I took coffee, I half a cup of coffee, which gave me the extreme jitters. There's way more caffeine in a cup of coffee than there is in a can of soda. I was just like, like not that serious, but like I was shaking. I was like, dude, I have the jitters. This feels so weird. <laughs> um, um, the uh, the thing about the caffeine is it's bad for your high pressure headaches, but it was good for the low pressure headaches. But we didn't know that, or probably Ashley knew that, but she didn't know which headache I was having. She didn't know, I don't know, I didn't ask her. But you don't wanna have the caffeine for the high pressure headaches because of something, but I don't remember what it is. But you do want it for the low pressure headache because of closing up your vessels and stuff. Something to do that. If you have a, if you have a aneurysm, that's when you don't want to have the cat. I think, sorry, don't quote me, but something about that was bad. And the, that triage nurse thought I was an idiot for, for drinking coffee. But I, was like, Dude, I didn't know. Didn't laugh at my jokes and thought I was an idiot. She was actually nice though. She was nice later. 
um, she was actually perfectly fine the whole time. Mo almost, I think all of them, all of my nurses, all of my doctors were all great. Uh, people don't like that hospital around here for some reason. I don't, I don't honestly understand it exactly after my experience because this is my first time at the hospital besides the bee sting and the bee sting thing was fine too, but this is my first like stay at the hospital. Well, I don't have to stay there ever again, but they were fine. But my doctors were nice. The one doctor, I forget what his name is, but my first doctor, he told a joke to, uh, not to me, but to someone else. He was like, uh, to this little kid, he's like, He's like, you know what kind of uh, bees have milk? What does he say? You know what kind of bees have milk? And he was like, a milk bee. And he's like, no. Then he like goes in closer and he's like, boobies. Dude, it made me laugh because I was not expecting that. Boobies. <laughs> Thought that was funny. Caffeine is a stimulant. Okay. Get rid of energy drinks. Stick to coffee. Coffee's disgusting, so I'll never I'll never drink it unless I guess it's prescribed. But I also don't I don't drink energy drinks either. Uh they're also pretty gross. Uh the most I do is drink soda. But usually I drink root beer, and most root beers don't have caffeine in them. Hey, I'm 80. I'm not old. Hey, I'm I'm not saying you're old. I'm just saying that the nurse said that 80s is old. And those are the people who have angina. So I have some sort of angina. Uh, tachycardia, something. Arrhythmia, something, something. I forget what it's called. <laughs> um, anyway, guys. We're going over time here. What is your favorite brand of root beer? Definitely A&W root beer. And then mug root beer and then barks root beer. Those are my three. I don't really drink the other root beers so much. Some of them are good. I don't like dad's root beer. I don't like the root beer that tastes more rooty. No, let's say more. Huh. I don't like beer. I was going to say more rooty than. I was going to say more beer than root. But whatever the thing that. Taste, I like the sweetness more than the than the flavor. But they have to be together. The first time I ever had root beer was when it became my instant favorite drink, uh, soda. So we were at McDonald's, and uh, I had high anxiety with ordering for myself. Right, I was a little kid. I was seven or something. And my brother Dave and my brother Ken bring me to McDonald's and my little brother Dakota. Right, So they brought us to McDonald's. We were probably, I don't know. Went to the mall or some shit. I don't remember. Anyways, we go to McDonald's for lunch or supper or something. And uh, I remember because this is when they had the N64 uh, consoles in the play area. And uh, they're like, okay, order for yourself. And I was like, okay, Happy Meal, cheeseburger with black pop, I said. Black pop. And I was like, because I didn't know what they were. Because we didn't really drink soda at home. So I was just like, okay. I know that it's black. And I know that I like it. So she, the girl she says, okay, whatever, whatever. I get my drink, or I get my order. And uh, I drink my soda. And I remember, like, it could be a movie moment. If they made a, a movie about my life, that would have to be one of the scenes because it it didn't change my life, but, like, it changed my life in some sort of, you know, small, meaningful way because I only had Coke before and Pepsi. I didn't like Pepsi. I still don't like Pepsi, but uh, I like Coke. And uh, that's it. And Sprite. I had Sprite, too. Um and I used to think, okay, you can get black pop or you can get white pop. That's it. Ask for black pop. And I'm like, what the heck is this? This is amazing, I'm thinking in my head. And I drank the whole thing right away. Not, not literally right away, but like so quick. Usually I tried to save it because we didn't have pop so much growing up because it's, you know, it's unhealthy for you, right? And so I would usually try to like, you know, 
sip it so it lasts longer. And our brothers, our mom would always, we'd only be able to get a small. Uh, and she's like, well, if you're thirsty, then we can ask them for water. And I'd be like, oh, to get a, like a bigger drink. Uh, but with our brothers, we could get a medium. This time I got a happy meal, so I got a small, but uh, I wanted a toy. So that's why I, I got a happy meal. But uh, if I didn't care what, what the toys were, I would just get a regular meal because then you got a bigger drink. But I think it was Inspector Gadget toys or something. I can't remember what they were. But anyways, I really wanted the toy, whatever it was. So I got a happy meal. Anyways, I drank it way faster than I normally would because I thought I thought it was so good. And so McDonald's, that would be Barks Root Beer. And the fountain Barks Root Beer, I think, tastes better than the bottled Barks Root Beer, but not as good as the canned Barks Root Beer. Uh, uh, okay. Yeah, what they're saying is old people disease are now finding it in a lot younger people like dementia, breast cancer and such. So you're saying like, or are you being serious? They said that I don't have it because I'm not old. But it sounds like either you're saying, dude, 80 year olds aren't old either. They're just finding old diseases in young people too who are 80. I don't know what you're saying. Um, you're such a good storyteller. Well, thank you. Lots of times people don't believe me. Probably because oftentimes I make stories up for, for entertainment, but yeah. What? Vicky was in a coma for five months at 22 from a bug. Like a bug? Like an insect? Or like a virus bug? Dang. Fun fact, here's another thing. And again, this feels awkward for me to be like, guys, my pain was so bad. Please believe me. But here's another thing. I asked if they could put me in a coma so I, so they could figure it out while I was sleeping because I couldn't stand the pain. They said no, <laughs> which probably is a good thing. I don't know. But uh, I was like, dog, I can't do this. That's the first time I told them. I also told them. Did I tell you that I told them? I told you guys, but did I tell you that I told them the the suicide thing? How I I don't know why I gave quotes um, where I said like I can understand why people decide to go that route when their pain is bad. Like this is one of those times. Uh, I don't plan to do that. Just for anyone who didn't catch that part of my whole story here, but uh, I told them that 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 was like my hey Archie. Come on. Come on up. Come on. We got Archie here. I told him that was my thing. And then at that same time, I brought up the coma suggestion. Did they email? They did? Okay, they emailed, guys. So we'll wrap her up here. Um, yeah, so they didn't put me in a coma, which is probably good. Uh, my, I mean, that would probably be... Uh, what do you call it? Negligence? They're like, oh, he asked it. Why is he in a coma? What happened? Oh, we just put him in there because he wanted to. <laughs> They'd probably be like, what? Um, but that's my, ugh, I just, I just couldn't. I was just like grasping at straws. I was like, what about this? What about that? I'm like, give me morphine. <laughs> I'm like, how about an EpiPen? That would probably make it worse. I didn't actually say that, but anyway, I feel good. Uh, Patty, so much of what we're talking about seems like what people have gone through after vaccine injury. I know it's controversial, but do some research. Research Kyle vaccine injury. Oh, I know people have, but I never got vaccinated, um, which I, I said earlier. If you're just joining, I'm going to get off now, but go back to the beginning. I try to answer as many questions as I could when it like the ones that have been in the, in the, the vlog. And then some of these, um, yeah, I wasn't vaccinated. I did have COVID. I know some people have maybe similar issues with the COVID, uh, long-term effects. Uh, but I, they didn't say that it was related to that. They, they didn't even, they're just like, okay, whatever. 
They didn't say that either. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> they just didn't seem concerned about it. Wow, Guitar Missy, just because I care about you and your health. Thank you so much, Guitar Missy. Some hundred bucks. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Um, yeah. Like I said in the vlog, things are going to be different for the next while because even though I feel good today, I ain't pushing nothing. You're not also, I'm not supposed to. Uh, at least until my angiogram and possible MRI, uh, because anything could happen. If I have a aneurysm and it bursts, I, I could die, and I don't feel like dying. So, And even if I don't die, I don't feel like going through that same pain again, ever again. So I'm just chill. So today we're going to go uh, take these orders in. I ran out of labels, so I didn't pack up all of them i still have i still have these ones left but we're close we're getting super close thank you so much for all your patience obviously i didn't mean for this to happen but like i'm still sorry that you've had to wait because i really appreciate everyone who took uh advantage of the sale because it our best sale like, <laughs> like it's the best sale it, it uh it helps a lot Obviously, this is how I make my living, so it helps a lot. Helps a lot. Pay my property taxes, guys. Thank you. <laughs> um, uh, the Novax group is why we still have the pandemic. Research the Spanish flu of 1980. Yeah, I mean, if it wasn't political, I feel like it would be a lot different, but unfortunately, that's how you divide people and then make it so that people hate each other instead of people who are causing problems. And, like, I don't want this to be a political whole thing because I don't know shit about shit. So I just want everyone to be happy, healthy. What's the saying? Hel happy, healthy, and wise. My mom used to say, early to bed, early to rise makes you healthy. Hel Wait, <laughs> healthy? <laughs> healthy, happy, healthy, and wise. Early to bed, early to rise makes you healthy, happy, and wise. Something like that. I want everyone to be awesome. So thank you. And thank you to everyone for your support and your suggestions. Like I said, even though I'm pretty sure most of you guys are who have also gone through things of, you know, similar like description. And I think that it it's probably not the same. I still appreciate you guys putting in your input because like it gives me more to ask about and then to rule out or to explore with my doctor because like i don't freaking know anything right all i know is hey doc it hurts and it happened this time when i kicked the softball that actually didn't happen but just an example of when it might happen and now i can be like oh well i know someone who whatever you guys have suggested happened to you right i can be like how about this you know because like doctors don't know everything but they know a lot and they can be like, oh, okay, well, he thinks it's that because of this, whatever. Maybe we could, you know, whatever. I don't know. So thank you. I appreciate it. Um, I will see you guys again. But like I said, videos are going to be different. Early to bed and early to rise makes a man healthy, wealthy, and wise. Healthy, wealthy, and wise. Not happy. What did I say? Convince us that we would want to go to bed at 8 o'clock. I'm like, dude, I'm a kid. I don't need to be wealthy. I'm already healthy. I'll learn. I have school. Anyways, guys, thank you so much. I will see you guys later. Off to go deliver a bunch of prints.